Welcome to another Noble Review session for students of AP Macroeconomics. Today I'm going to go over the top 10 concepts that you should have mastered by exam day. Let's start off with some fiscal policy. Suppose the economy is in recession. The government should pursue an expansionary fiscal policy. This can be an increase in government spending or a decrease in taxes. If the government increases government spending, this will increase aggregate demand, raise the price level, and increase output, also known as real GDP. When real GDP goes up, the unemployment rate will come down. A decrease in taxes will increase disposable income and therefore increase consumption. It will raise aggregate demand, price level, and real GDP, and also decrease unemployment. The ADAS model shows the rightward shift of aggregate demand, which would increase the price level, increase output, and therefore reduce unemployment. A contractionary fiscal policy is most appropriate during times of inflation. A contractionary fiscal policy can be a decrease in government spending or an increase in taxes. A decrease in government spending will decrease aggregate demand, price level, and real GDP. This will increase unemployment. An increase in taxes will decrease disposable income and therefore consumption, aggregate demand, price level, and real GDP while raising unemployment. In the ADAS model below, the aggregate demand and short and aggregate supply are showing inflation. As a result of the fiscal policy, the increase in taxes or decrease in government spending, AD shifts to the left and their full employment is restored. The next concept that you should have mastered for exam day are the multipliers. The spending multiplier, the tax multiplier, and the balanced budget multiplier. The spending multiplier is used to determine the change in output from a change in spending. To get the spending multiplier, you take 1 and you divide it by the marginal propensity to save. The change in spending times the spending multiplier will give us the change in overall output. We use the tax multiplier when we want to calculate how a change in taxes affects overall output. It's the marginal propensity to consume divided by the marginal propensity to save. If there's an increase in taxes or decrease in taxes, the output is going to change by a multiplied amount. The change in taxes times the tax multiplier will give you a change in overall output. We use the balanced budget multiplier whenever there's an equal increase in taxes and spending at the same time. That is, the government's operating from a balanced budget. You take the change in spending, multiply it by the balanced budget multiplier, and you get your change in output. The balanced budget multiplier is always equal to 1. So the change in output will be equal to the change in spending. This is because the spending multiplier is stronger than the tax multiplier. The next concept is the crowding out effect. The crowding out effect is associated with expansionary fiscal policy. That is when the government increases its deficit, deficit spending. If the government increases spending, it has to finance that somehow, so it borrows money. It increases demand for loanable funds and therefore raises the real interest rate. The increase in real interest rate will reduce private sector spending, that is consumption and gross investment. The loanable funds market below shows the increase in demand and the increase in real interest rate from the government's deficit spending. Another way of looking at this is saying that the increase in government spending reduces the overall private supply of loanable funds and therefore increases the real interest rate. That is shown in the graph on the right. It's a leftward shift of the su private supply of loanable funds, real interest rates will rise, and that will also reduce consumption, and gross investment. The next concept has to do with interest rates and long-run economic growth. When interest rates are low, we know that there will be more gross investment. Now, when we have a lot of investment spending for the long term, that's going to increase the nation's capital stock, the stock of all the capital goods in the economy. This will shift the long-run aggregate supply curve to the right in the long run, or shift the production possibility curve of the economy outward. If interest rates are high, gross investment falls. Now, in the long run, if we have falling gross investment, the capital stock will decrease. It will reduce the nation's capital stock. The long run aggregate supply curve could shift to the left, or the PPC curve could shift inward. Don't even think about showing up to the exam without mastering monetary policy. Monetary policy is when the Fed 
through open market operations, buys or sells government securities. It can also change the discount rate or the reserve requirement, but the focus is on open market operations. So if the economy is in recession, the Fed should pursue an easy monetary policy. That is, the Fed should buy bonds on the open market. This will increase the money supply, reduce nominal interest rates, and encourage investment spending in the short run. This will increase aggregate demand, price level, and real GDP. Overall, this would reduce unemployment. The graph on the left shows the money market. It's a rightward shift to the supply of money, which is set by the Fed, reduces the nominal interest rate. This will increase investment spending, which will shift aggregate demand to the right. When the economy is experiencing inflation, the Fed should pursue a tight monetary policy. That is, the Fed should sell bonds on the open market, and this would decrease the money supply, increase nominal interest rates, decrease investment spending, decrease aggregate demand, price level, and real GDP, and increase unemployment. The money market graph on the left shows the leftward shift of the money supply, increasing the nominal interest rate, which would reduce interest-sensitive spending, such as investment spending, shifting aggregate demand to the left. The next concept is known as the money multiplier. The money multiplier is equal to 1 divided by the reserve ratio. If the reserve requirement is 10%, we would say the money multiplier is 1 divided by 0.1, or 10. To get the change in money supply from an open market operation, you take the open market operation, such as the bond purchase or bond sale, and multiply it by the money multiplier. That will give you the change in overall money supply. To get the change in money supply from a demand deposit into a checking account, you take the excess reserves from the deposit and multiply it by the multiplier. To get the change in overall deposits in the banking system from a demand deposit, you take the initial deposit and you multiply that by the multiplier. The next concept has to do with interest rates and bond prices. Well, I'll tell you, they're inversely related. Say the Fed pursues an easy monetary policy. The money supply increases, nominal interest rates come down, so bond prices will go up. When the Fed pursues a tight monetary policy, the money supply comes down, interest rates go up, and therefore bond prices come down. The next concept has to do with the winners and losers of unanticipated inflation. The winners of unanticipated inflation are people that make fixed payments, the debtors. The losers are the people that are receiving those fixed payments, the creditors, or people that earn fixed income. Whenever there's inflation, typically real wages will decline. When inflation is low, real wages will increase. Wages have more purchasing power. It's important to understand the Fisher equation. The real interest rate is equal to the nominal interest rate minus inflation, or the anticipated inflation rate. The next concept also has to do with interest rates, but this is interest rates and the value of a currency. If interest rates are up, foreigners will demand more interest-bearing assets, such as treasury bonds. This increase in demand for treasury bonds increases the demand for the currency, and the value of the currency will appreciate in the foreign exchange market. When interest rates are low, foreigners will demand fewer interest-bearing assets, such as treasury bonds, and therefore there's less demand for the currency, and the currency will depreciate. When currency depreciates, the net exports can rise, and when currency appreciates, the net exports for the economy will fall. The next concept has to do with the relationship between the Phillips curve and the ADAS model. When aggregate demand shifts to the right, there's going to be point-to-point -point movement along our short-run Phillips curve, and that's going to be point-to-point -point movement leftward. AD shifts right, point-to-point -point left on the Phillips curve. If AD shifts left, we go point-to-point -to, -point to the right on the short-run Phillips curve. They work in opposite directions. If aggregate supply in the short run shifts to the right, the short-run Phillips curve will shift to the left, not point-to-point. -point. The entire curve will shift to the left. When aggregate supply in the short run shifts to the left, the short-run Phillips curve is going to shift to the right. So overall, the model works in opposite directions. Just when AD shifts, we go point-to-point, -point, opposite. And when aggregate supply in the short run shifts, the short-run Phillips curve shifts, 
opposite. And now for a quick bonus concept. This has to do with ADAS in the long run. In the long run, the economy always returns to its full employment level of output. So if the economy is in recession and there is no monetary fiscal policy, nominal wages will fall as workers will have to take wage cuts. The production costs are down, so aggregate supply in the short run will increase. The price level comes down, real GDP goes up, and unemployment falls. If the economy is experiencing inflation, nominal wages will rise as workers raise inflation expectations. The short run aggregate supply curve decreases, price level goes up, real GDP comes down, and the unemployment rate will increase. Those are 10 concepts that you should have mastered for exam day. To see all of the graphs that you need to know, check out the video, Every Graph That You Need to Know for the AP Macroeconomics Exam. Thanks for watching, and good luck on the test.